go. Let's, um, we are going to do, I didn't type it in here, but this is section, oops, there we go, section 5, 6. And we're going to do inequalities with two triangles this time. All right, not just one. Let's just review a little bit with the one triangle. So, uh, I don't know, let's just, since I went with this different screen, I don't have all my pre-made stuff to the side, so I'll have to just make a triangle. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? That looks great. It is. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> all right, so here's the inequality. Remember what we said? If um, oh, Let's just stick some numbers in here. Let's say that's 70, and that is... 30. What's that? That's 100. So this has got to be what? 80. All right. This is just review. This is not new stuff right here. So if I have this right here, if I told you this information right here, you should be able to tell me which sides are the, which, which is the smallest side, the medium side, and the biggest side, right? So what would be the smallest side? Let's go smallest to largest since they usually ask us that. AB is the smallest side. How do you know it's the smallest side? Just because it looks like it? Is that what we're doing? Not because it looks like it, because it's what? Say it, line. It's opposite the smallest angle. That's right. So 30 degrees is right here. AB is opposite the smallest angle, so side AB is the smallest side. So if I go in order from smallest to largest, AB is the smallest one. Um, let's look for the largest. Let's, let's jump to the largest side. So you look for what? The largest angle, right? And then you look opposite the largest angle, and that's BC. So we'll put the largest right here. Now, again, it's not always a good idea to, to just look at it and say, well, that sure looks like it's the largest one. All right, don't go by that. Michael, you with me? Thank you. Gabby, you with me? Thank you. So I guess it wasn't just the lights, was it? <laughs> Didn't think so. So look at, look at the middle one. So if AB is the um, smallest one and BC is the largest one, which one is the one that's in the middle? Only one left over, the one opposite the 70, and that would be what? AC. All right, so this was inequalities, right, unequal sides in one triangle. Everybody got that? So we're going to look today at inequalities in, what do I say? Two triangles, okay? So we're going to do two triangles instead of one. But the same basic idea holds true, all right? So um, I don't like how they name this, but we're going we're gonna to call it, I'm going to call it a different name than what they call it. They call it the hinge theorem, and I'll show you why they call it that. But I'll tell you what, let's draw the triangle first before I tell you what I call it. It's not just me. It's I've taught out of other books before, and it seems like most of the other books call it what I'm going to call it right now. So um, I don't know. Let's just make up a triangle. Seems like all my triangles look the same, don't they? I don't know why. Something about that triangle it just looks like a normal triangle to me. So there's one triangle right here. And let's copy that. Let me think for a second here. Yeah, I'm not going to copy that. Let's make another triangle. I'll tell you what, though, I will do. Let's, um, Let's just make this a little smaller so I can put the two of them right next to each other. So it's a little bit big. All right, let's draw another triangle. And let's just um, just make it look a little bit different. Let's make it look obtuse. Is that all right? Let's see if I can uh, do this. Let me just change this just a little bit. I'm doing this on purpose. We'll be ready in a second. That's not bad. All right, here's what we got. We got A, B, C, and we'll just call this X, Y, Z. We'll go Y right here and Z right here. Okay. Now watch what I if I told you this. What if this was equal to this? All right. And I told you that this one was equal to this one. You with me? But I told you that angle B, I'll tell you what, let's put it, let's just put a number in here instead of saying that it's bigger or smaller. Let's say angle B is about 80 degrees. And we'll say angle Z, now it's obtuse, isn't it? So it's got to be more than what? 90. So I don't know, I'm just making this up. Let's say it's 110 degrees. Everybody with me? Are these triangles congruent? 
They are? If I pick this one and set it right on top of this one, they'd be exactly the same? No. No, because look, I have a side and a side. I do have an angle, but what's true about the angle? It's not the same, is it? Okay, it's obtuse and acute, so it's not equal. So it's not side angle side, is it? All right, it's not side angle side. Now, if this was 80 degrees and this was 80 degrees, then what could you say about the two triangles? Then you could say they're what? Then they're congruent to each other. Okay, but they're not equal to each other. So I've got a side. I got two pairs of sides that are equal, and then, yeah, I got two sets of sides that are equal, and then I have an unequal angle in between. So this is not side angle side, but I do call it this. Watch this: side angle side in equality. The inequality means something's not equal. Would you agree? Okay. So something's not equal. What's not equal? Well, this angle. This angle right here is not equal to this angle right here. But these two sides are equal to these two sides. So they're not congruent triangles. They're unequal. But guess what that tells us? And I'll show you here in a sec. What does that tell us? This is smaller than this, isn't it? So let's look opposite. And now what we did on this stuff right here? We looked at the smaller angle, we looked opposite the smaller angle, and then we looked at the bigger angle, we looked opposite the bigger angle, but that was all in one triangle, wasn't it? Well, look right here. We have two different triangles here. So what do you think? What do you think? Let's compare like AC to XY. Look opposite the 80 and look opposite the 110. Do you see those two sides? AC and what? X, Y, or Y, X, whatever you want to call it. What do you think might be true about the lengths of AC compared to X, Y? This is opposite the smaller angle. This is opposite the bigger angle. So take a wild guess what you think might be true. And you're probably right. No, compare them to each other. Look, think of where I was going with this. I compared this, right? I compared this side to this side. So we said one is bigger than the other, right? So when I say compare them to each other, I want to know, is one bigger than the other? Are they equal to each other? Is one smaller than the other? What's the deal? Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So if, if this side AC is opposite 80 and this side XY is opposite 110, what do you think could possibly be true about those two sides? That's right. AC is what? Less than XY. And why is that? W-H-Y. Why is that? Because this is opposite the what? Smaller angle. You see it? It's kind of the same thing as we did before. All right? You guys are dead as a doornail today. What's going on? What is it? Just what? Just tired? Why are we so tired today? I'm, I'm, like, I'm getting like zero response from you today. It's because there's no sun. Is that what it is? You guys just seem dead. You guys just seem dead today. Well, how many 11th graders? There's not that many. You got a lot of 11th graders in here? Did you stay up late doing history project? Yeah, is that what it was? I don't know. All right, anyway, I'll just keep teaching. It'd be nice to get a little interaction, though. It would be nice. All right? If we stay on topic. Okay. So anyway, look at this. This side has got to be smaller than this side. Why? Because it's opposite the smaller angle. Make sense? All right. Now, this is because this is two different triangles. So this is an inequality in two triangles, not one triangle. But don't you think that it's real, real close to this? right? Because what do we do here? We look for the biggest angle. And so the side opposite the biggest angle in this one triangle is bigger than the side opposite the smaller angle in that one triangle. But now we have two triangles, don't we? Now, you have to have these two sides equal to these two sides, though, for this to work. All right? You can't just have any old angle 80 and any old angle 110, all right? It's got to, you got to have uh, these sides equal to these sides right here, okay? So if you do that, it's kind of like side angle side, except my angle right there, that's the unequal thing, okay? That's what's not equal, all right? So um, you look opposite the smaller one, you look opposite the bigger one, bigger angle, and then that tells you what sides are bigger than the other. Now, I could do it like this, too, couldn't I? I, I could say XY, compare XY to AC. What would I say there? XY is what? Greater than AC, right? It's the same exact thing, isn't it? Just reading it from right to left. Everybody see that? AC is less than XY, or XY is what? Greater than AC. So that's not that big of a deal, is it? All right. 
Why in the world do they call that the hinge theorem? Well, let's think about this for a sec. Um, let me see how I can demonstrate this. And with this program, I think I should be able to. Watch, here's why they call it the hinge theorem. If I took this 80, right, and I see how it's on a hinge like this, all right? See, if I took it here and it's 80, see AC? AC is going to be less than XY. But watch, if I made this bigger, what if I made that 80 degrees into 110 degrees? What do you think might be true about AC? It would equal XY. Very good. Okay? Do you see that? So if I made that 80 degrees into 110 degrees, about right in there, if I connected from A down to C here, then they would be equal. Then they would be congruent triangles, wouldn't they? All right? But um, watch. What if I did this? What if I made this more than 110 degrees? Then what could I say about AC? AC would be from here to here, wouldn't it? What do you think would be true about AC compared to XY now? It would be bigger, wouldn't it? Do you see that? That's why they call it the hinge theorem. Does that make sense? Okay, because it's on a hinge, right? I didn't change the length of the side, did I? When it was here, it had two arcs or two little tick marks there, didn't it? Okay. By me doing this to it, did it make it did it make that side any bigger? No. It just changed the angle. That's the only thing it did. So I still have two equal sides equal to two equal sides, don't I? All right. But it all depends on that angle right there. And that's why they call it the hinge theorem theorem. I had never heard that before until I started teaching out of this book. But um, usually in other books that I've taught out of, they've called it side angle side inequality. I don't believe you'll see that in our book. You'll see hinge theorem. And the hinge theorem, it's, it's not a bad name for it. It makes sense, doesn't it? Because if you think of this thing on a hinge, right, it kind of makes sense. But I, all, I, I like side angle side a little bit better because it tells you some more information about your triangles. It tells you you have two equal sides to two equal sides over here. Everybody see that? But the, the inequality part of it is the angle in between. Right? The angle in between is not equal. I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you, doesn't it? All right, let's see. Is there anything else? Um, let's do an example. Do we have time? Yeah, we got time to do two examples. Let's pause this while I draw the picture. Okay, I've got my two pictures here. I've got this side is 12, this is 15, and I made a triangle over here. This is 12 and this is 15. I didn't copy the whole triangle, did I, and, and paste it. So they're not congruent triangles. Um, the book says that this is about 72 degrees. Now, this is not very accurate, but it's good enough for what we're trying to do. And let's say this is 61 degrees. All right, so this angle right here is bigger than this angle. And this is good that it's not real, real obvious because you have to go by the numbers. You can't just go by the picture. All right? You can't just look at the picture and say, yeah, that one looks bigger, so it's bigger. Because sometimes, I promise you, sometimes you're going to draw the picture that is absolutely not to scale. And you can't just look at it and say, well, that looks bigger, so I'm just going to write that down for my bigger side. You've got to know the math behind it. Does that make sense? So look what we have here. Do we have a side angle side inequality situation? We do because look, I've got one side equal to another side, right? I've got a second side equal to another side. Look at the, I've got the angles in between, don't I? That's bigger than that, right? So this is side angle side inequality uh, situation. But now what I want to do is I want to find out what side is bigger. So let's just go A, B, C. Um, D, E, F, right there, okay? So they're going to ask you, um, compare the given measures. Compare A, C to um, D, F. And you just have to say whether it's bigger, it's equal, or it's greater, or it's less than. So look at A, C. A, C is opposite 72 degrees, isn't it? Well, D, F is opposite what? 61 degrees. So which one is bigger? So AC is bigger than DF. So AC is greater than DF. It's a simple answer to write down. All you have to do is <coughs> write down either greater than or less than. But you have to know why it is. Make sure you know why. Because um, if I just looked at this, if I just looked at AC and DF, just glanced at it, is it very obvious that AC is bigger than DF? It's not obvious, is it? It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it is obvious. But I'm telling you, they're going to, 
every once in a while they'll throw some things in there where the pictures are absolutely not to scale and you can't just look at it and say, well, that sure looks bigger than that, so I'm going to say it's bigger. Okay, you can't always go by that. I told you before on the SATs, you know the SATs to get into college, all right? They'll have pictures on there and underneath of it it'll say not drawn to scale. And they say that so that you know how to do the math and you don't just look at the picture and say, oh, that one's bigger, that one's smaller, all right? So you got to know what's going on. Make sense? Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, they also do the converse. I almost forgot about that. What if um, what if we did this? Let's use the same example. Let's get rid of a whole bunch of junk here. All this stuff, all this. I'll keep the sides on there, but we'll get rid of the angles. And we do this a lot with theorems. All right, so let's do that. And let's say, I don't know, I'm just making this up. So... So 15 and 12, uh, what are my options for this? This has to be in between what? It's got to be between 3 and 27, doesn't it? So let's just make this like 20. Is that all right? And let's make this smaller. Let's say this is like 10. All right. Does that work? Do I get triangles like that? Yep. Take the two smaller ones. That's 22. Is that bigger than 15? Yep. Two smaller ones, that's uh, 27. Is that bigger than 20? Yeah, so that's okay. Now, I gave you all the sides. What do you think they're going to ask for now? They're going to ask for the, they're going to say compare, compare angle B to angle F. Compare those angles to each other. So here's angle B and here's angle F. I'm sorry. They would say E. I'm sorry. E. How's that? They would probably compare those two to each other. Now look, I've got side, angle, side, and I've got side, angle, side. I just don't know if these two angles are equal to each other or not, do I? Actually, we call this side, side, side inequality because i got two sides equal and one side not equal. So it's really called side, side, side inequality. What do you think might be true then about this angle B and this angle E right here? Look at this angle. It's opposite the 20, isn't it? And look at this side right here. It's opposite. Everybody see that? It's opposite this one right here. So this angle is opposite 20. This angle is opposite 10. What do you think is true about angle B compared to angle E? It's got to be bigger than it, right? It's got to be greater than. That's the converse, right? So if they give you three sides, you should be able to figure out between this angle and this angle which one's the bigger one. See the difference between this and the regular side angle side inequality? Yeah. All right, so that's the kind of stuff they do there. Let's do one more example. This one's a little bit tougher of an example. Use these dark green and see what that looks like. Can't use that dark green on the black background. Let's try it on this one. Uh, let's see, where'd my example go? There it is. All right, just bear with me while I draw out this picture. I'm looking at top of 370 if you want to follow along. So that, well, that actually kind of looks like this. Goes out like that. This thing goes straight up, about like that. This connects to here, and it connects to here. That's pretty close, not exactly, but... So that side is equal to that side right there. This angle is 65 degrees right here. And look at this angle right here. They say that this is 6x plus 15. You knew they were going to throw an x in there somewhere, didn't you? And so there it is. This is 11, and this is 9. And let's put some letters in here. This is E and H, and this is J and G. J and G. All right, and the question says, um, let's take a look at this. I want to see what the ranges are for, uh, for X. We'll do this real quick. Now look what I have. I've got, um, I got this side equaling this side right here, correct? And look what else I have. They don't tell you, but you can see it. That side and this side are equal, aren't they? Okay. So look, I've, this is like that side, side, side inequality thing. I got two equal sides. Don't pack up, please. So I have two equal sides and I got two unequal sides. This is bigger than this, so tell me something about these angles down here. Are they equal? No. I mean, 
this angle right here is opposite 11, and this angle, 65, is opposite 9. Everybody see that? So which one's bigger? The one on the left, the 6x plus 15, isn't it? So 6x plus 15 has to be bigger than what? 65. All right, and now I can solve for x. Subtract 15 from both sides, and so 6x is greater than, what's that, 50, right? Divide by 6, and then whatever you get for that, I think it's 27 and a half. So x is greater than, yep, yeah, it's 27.5. There you go. How's that? All right, I'm going to give you a worksheet, and it's 5, 6. Now, here's the front and the back, but it's only four problems on the front and the back, so it's only eight problems altogether. So it's one of four front and back, section 5, 6. Okay? Have that done for tomorrow. Uh, by the way, we are we taking a quiz, or is it my other class? We are taking a quiz. What? Tomorrow. Oh, well, then I can't have homework set the study for quiz. Well, we have another one. How about that? So it's over section 5-3. It was on the, it was there at the beginning of the week, okay? So there shouldn't be any surprises. On there, what I talk about there? I talk about it every other day. On the lesson plans that I send out to you and I have on teacheries that you're supposed to be looking at, there should be no surprises at all. So there is a quiz on uh, section 5-3, and that would be tomorrow. So please be ready for it. Let me give you a worksheet before you go.